Alrighty boys, today is the day. Today is the day that the Evo 8 is gonna be going on a Haltech Elite 2500. Now here we have part of the items that we're gonna need. This is a plug and play adapter harness for Evo 4 to Evo 8. Well, this is the box harness being in here. And then as far as the ECU goes, we are gonna be pulling the ECU out of the all-wheel drive Type R. This is, like I said, an Elite 2500 on the car right now. And this car is gonna be going, in the future, it's gonna be going to a Nexus R3. Haltech's made a Nexus R5 for a while now. They recently, within the last few months, came out with a Nexus R3. And that is what this car is going to be getting. So we don't need the Elite 2500 on here anymore or the wideband. It is a WB1 Haltech wideband and that is going to be going on to the other, onto the Evo 8 as well. If you know Evos, you know the Factory 8 ECU isn't, the Factory 4 through 8 ECU is not all that good. There's not much capability with it. 9, it's a little bit better. Evo 10 OEM ECUs, they're pretty solid. 8, quite trash. Now before I put the Haltech in it, as you guys know, I've been dealing with issues here and there on this car. Last night, it appears we fixed the very last issue, which was a map sensor wiring issue. I put about 10 miles on it total last night. I'm gonna go put a couple more miles on it in the heat of the day, just to make sure that issue is indeed resolved. Before I put the Haltech on, you know what I'm saying. Let's just make sure it's resolved. I'm gonna do another 20 miles today. And if it dies without fail, or sorry, sorry, sorry. If it doesn't die and doesn't fail, we know of course it's good to go. Before I can make it maybe, maybe five miles. It was getting worse and worse. But maybe five miles before the car would die. Two miles in, so far everything is running absolutely beautifully. Like we discussed in yesterday's video, for the time being, I'm not gonna put the Haltech IC7 dash in it. I'm just gonna maintain the the factory dash, factory appearance on the, on the inside. I do wanna figure out some sort of way, just so we're not running two wide bands, the AEM and the Haltech. I do want to get some sort of Haltech, just little gauge to put right here in place of this AEM in place of the AEM digital display. Mustang trying to get the gap. Too bad she's on about five pound of boost right now. Maybe eight. Laid out in front of me here is everything needed to get this car on a Haltech Elite 2500. So we have the ECU itself, the plug and play adapter harness for Evo 4 to 8, and last but not least, the WB1, which is the wideband and controller. Haltech does also include a GM style intake air temp sensor, but we already have the same sensor on the car, so we should be good to go. Alrighty, let's go ahead and pull out the factory ECU. So pop open the glove compartment. That guy's gonna come out like so. Now there'll be three bolts for the OEM ECU. And just like that, she's out. So the Haltech plug and play adapter harness and box is gonna make for a very, very simple install. Unlike on the Type R, where we had to pretty much build everything from scratch, it seemed like, this truly should be plug and play. So those two connectors go into the Haltech Elite 2500, and this side is gonna plug right into the factory harness. Let's double check before we move forward with this project. Okay, let's get there. Bam. Bam, 
and bam. Truly is gonna be a plug and play setup. Let's do a quick breakdown of exactly how the wideband is gonna be set up. So we have the Elite 2500 there. We have our first cable, which is a HT13025. That is gonna plug into the WB1. And then it goes into this harness here with the power and ground. This side is gonna go into the ECU itself. Red power, 12 volt, black, of course, ground. And then the HT010726 harness plugs in there and goes into the sensor. Here's the up close look, starting with the sensor to the harness, to the wideband controller box, and then that wire comes out to this power ground harness into the ECU. Now the next thing I need to do is figure out where everything is going to be mounted. SPL, Speed Lab, makes a Haltech mount, which I was not aware of until now when I was doing a little bit of research. Had I knew about that, I would have ordered that up, but I didn't and I don't have it. So I'm gonna go ahead and build my own, kind of using theirs as, a, as inspiration for mine. So basically I'm just gonna start off with building a base plate that is gonna sit right up in here and the WB1, the adapter and the Elite 2500 are all gonna bolt right onto that base plate. So first up, let's build it out of cardboard. This right here, those two guys there, that's the factory OEM mounting location for the ECU. And I might be able to utilize those to build my mount. So not quite wide enough. I trimmed a little too much off, but that's pretty much the basics. Okay, it's not gonna be quite enough space. We're gonna have to rethink. Okay, I'm on to something here. We're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming right here, just because the Elite 2500 is quite lengthy, but I should be able to use those two mounts up there, that mount there for this wiring harness. And if it's a little rattly, I can easily put a, a rib nut into this guy and use that mount there as well. But I do want a space here for the wiring to pass through. So I guess the first thing I need to do is go ahead and trim our dash, which I don't wanna do, but it's gotta be done if I wanna run an Elite 2500 and if I want it clean looking. So something like that and then this top line here, that should give us plenty of space to get this Haltech in here. all cleaned up it looks quite OEM I might clean it up a little bit more later on but for now I'm just gonna build this mounting plate so I have three bolts up top I don't know if that's enough when it's made out of metal to prevent it from flopping around like I said though if it's not not a big deal a little spacer right here rib nut on the plate and a bolt that should take care of it now we should have plenty of space for this guy that is perfect. So I have a really good idea of where everything's gonna be mounted. This plate, 13 inches by nine inches. I have a scrap piece of aluminum here, maybe quarter inch thick, that I will be building this mounting plate out of. The mounting plate is cut and drilled. Bolt, bolt, and bolt. First thing we're gonna mount is the ECU itself. This is exactly where it's gonna sit. So this long nose Sharpie. Something like that. So that's gonna sit there. Our plug and play adapter 
is effectively going to sit where the factory ECU would sit. So something like that. And then the WB1 can go there or probably over there. This is going to be nice. Clean, simple, effective. So I have the four holes drilled where the 2500 is going to sit. And now I'm going to take an M5 tap and go ahead and tap out those holes. For an M5 tap, you need a 4.2 millimeter drill bit. ECU is mounted. That ain't going nowhere. Now we need to mount the adapter, which there's no way to bolt this guy on. I think the best method here is just going to be pop a hole there, hole there, hole there, hole there, and zip tight to the plate. Either that or do what I did on the Type R and just use double-sided tape. Either option works fine. Let's get this mounted and then the wideband controller mounted and we're pretty much done. All right, coming right along. I can easily pop a zip tie there, but let's move on to the wide band. I think that guy is gonna sit right there. <laughs> finished product is complete, is finished. Base plate, Elite 2500, WB1 adapter hole so that we can run wiring through the backside. I could have shortened this harness up. I didn't really want to mess with the Haltech harnesses, so I left it. Now these two power and ground for the wide band. This is gonna go to, of course, the wide band sensor. And this guy here, the adapter, this is the exact location the OEM ECU would sit. So the factory wiring plugs in right there, and we're done. Let's throw it up in the car, see how it looks. Alrighty, we're finished. Just need to do a little bit of wiring, and there's one other little thing, little tidbit of a detail that I'm not liking. That plate, that needs to be black. I am going to be powder coating this plate black. I'm not a big fan of paint. Powder is the way to go. First step in the powder coat process is, of course, to get the surface roughened up so the powder sticks. So to do that, we use a sandblaster. We got the piece sandblasted. Before we powder coat it, I need to mask off the threads with these little plugs. Otherwise, we won't have any threads left. Toss it in the oven for about 30 minutes, which is the gas out phase. Pull it out, spray it, bake it, and we got a powder coated plate. So this here is the grounding clip. This is what attracts the powder to the part and allows it to stick to the part before it goes in the oven. Color of choice is Blackjack from Prismatic Powders. This specific powder will cure at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. While we wait for the plate to be done in the oven, we need to run our wideband. So this is gonna be essentially replacing the factory front O2 sensor on the car. So from here to here, that's super easy. I do need to find a good spot to run it through the firewall. I think I got a pretty, pretty good location. I'm just gonna run it through where the OEM engine harness goes through. Best way to go about that, I'm gonna take this Deutsch connector right here. I'm gonna take the six wires out of it just so it's quite a bit thinner to run through the grommet. Now I would highly recommend snapping photos of the placement of the wiring. Deutsch connectors are pretty easy to work on. If you take a little pick like this, you need to get this guy out like that. And now simply reach down in there and pull the pins out of the connector. Something like that. That is how I was able to pull the harness through the firewall boot. Stick a screwdriver through the boot, 
tape the harness onto the screwdriver, pull it through. Now, like I mentioned, there is no sense and no need for the OEM front O2 sensor. So I will be removing that and putting the whole tech in place. All right, my friends, our plate is out of the oven. Everything is mounted back on. This thing is complete, ready to go. Here's the backside, the extra loom if we need it for something else in the future. Man, oh man, I am very, very pleased with how this turned out. I did decide to go ahead. This is the power and ground for the WB1. I did decide to toss on a two pin Deutsch connector for that, just so we can easily install and remove this from the car. I'd want it stuck on the car permanently due to wiring. So now we just have two connectors right here, the four for the factory ECU, and this thing will pop right off. So we need to find a power and ground on the chat on the car itself install the male version of this two pin Deutsch connector and this thing can go on, get bolted in and attempt to first start. Thankfully, doing all the wiring on the Type R, I really learned a lot with what to do, what not to do, how to make things clean, how to make things removable, so on and so forth. So this is turning out a billion times better than the Type R Haltech setup, which you guys already know that's gonna be redone in the future with the Nexus, which I'm deeply excited for that. Right behind where the Haltech is gonna sit is the factory blower motor and a bunch of other plugins that take a significant amount of voltage. So if I'm not mistaken, I should be able to just pop in there, snag a power in the ground from, let's say like the blower motor, tap into that, it will be good to go. So here is a plugin for something on the blower motor and bottom left the blue pin that's going to be a ground and then we're going to need a 12 volt and it looks like we do have a 12 volt here as well which is the white wire and they are ignition it is a ignition power so we don't run into the same issue we had on the type r where the hall tech is constantly drawing power that was not fun this is all very, very simple. This is our wideband, power and ground, four plugins for the ECU, and that's it. Let's get this bad boy installed and see how it looks, see how it performs. Hopefully, she'll fire up. The entire setup is installed. There's a little bit of cleanup to do on the factory ECU harness, but she is done, my friends. Let's turn on the key. And sure enough, we have EC power. From here, I just need to go ahead, plug in the laptop, slap on a base map, and see about getting a first start on the Haltech. This thing truly was plug and play. Of course, we do need to fit the glove box, which we're probably gonna have to modify the glove, the glove compartment a little bit, but that's not a big deal. EC is in, everything is good to go. Do not have a proper base map for the car, and uh, I'm out of time for the day. It ain't gonna fire on the map that's on the car, but the hard part's done from here, it's just tuning, and I'm not a well-versed map adjuster, so I do not know how to build a base map for this thing. That is beyond my pay grade. But it's done, it's mounted, it looks very, very clean, and everything that I installed today, the Elite 2500, the WB1 wideband, the plug and play harness, and I'll go ahead and link an actual Elite 2500 mount down in the description box below. All that will be linked down below. Bright and early tomorrow morning, we should be able to get a first start on this thing. Just needs a good old base map. We'll be good to go. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out, and I'll see you boys tomorrow. It's gonna be fun. Haltex the way. Goodbye.